Uh, I'm going to dive right into this demo right here. Uh, we're going to start by launching Xcode. So Xcode is free. You just go to the Mac App Store and download it. And when you launch it, you're going to get this splash screen is going to appear right here. Let's hide these other things. Um, so here's Xcode. This uh, splash screen has a list of all the projects that you've been working on. So right now we have none because it's the start of the quarter, but you'll have you know, each week you're going to have more and more projects piling up in this side. And then these three choices are the three ways to kind of get into Xcode. One, here, Playground, that's basically you, gives you the ability to write iOS apps and play with Xcode without building an app. Okay, so you can call APIs, put things uh, on screen, draw things, etc. It's kind of a playground for playing around with iOS. We really won't be using that much in this app, but in this class, in my demos, uh, but you can certainly, you're welcome to use them uh, as you're playing around uh, with Xcode. It's kind of a fun environment. Uh, down at the bottom here, you can check out an existing Xcode uh, project, iOS project, uh, that is in source code uh, management. Okay, now we're going to talk about source code management probably at a Friday section in this quarter, but not right at the beginning of the class. But uh, source code management is basically a way that you can check your code in and out of like a database. Okay, so you can work with the team, um, each make changes, merge your changes, all that stuff. So here is where you would check out um, your project to work on. And this middle one is to create a new Xcode project, a new Xcode app. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, we're going to create from scratch a new app. Most of my demos involve creating an application from scratch. Okay, just because I think it's easier for you to learn if there's no magic behind the scenes where uh, things are appearing out of nowhere. So we're going to start from scratch and go from there each time. All right, so I'm going to click on this. You can see it wants to create an app for me, so it's going to ask me some questions. First, it wants to know what kind of app I want to build, and we want to build an iOS application. So make sure you click iOS application here, not watch app or Apple TV app or an OS X app. Okay, we don't want any of that. We want iOS application. And inside there, we have some choices of the kind of iOS app we want to build, uh, like a game or this master detail, which is usually for browsing a database. Uh, we're almost always going to choose this one, single view application. Uh, the view there is kind of referring to the view in MVC, model view controller, that design paradigm. But uh, this is the ba most basic template, and it gives us the least amount of code to start with, which is what we want, because we're learning, so we want to write the code. We don't want it to... Uh, write any code for us. So we're going to pick single view template there. Now it wants to know a few things about our app, what the name of our app is, etc. Um, the app we're going to build today is a calculator and it's going to look quite a bit like this calculator. Not exactly the same, but similar to this uh, calculator. This is the basic calculator that comes with Mac OS. And it's going to look like this. It's going to have some keypads, it's going to have some operations, it's going to have a little display in here. Basically, a calculator. So, I'm going to call my app Calculator. So, that's the name of this app. When I look at it on my phone, it's going to say Calculator is the name of it, okay? This organization name can be anything you want. It's basically going to appear in the copyright of your code, okay? When you write code at the top, it's going to say copyright, whatever you put here, put whatever you want, your name or whatever. This, however, wants to uniquely identify you, okay? as a developer. And a good way to do it is this reverse DNS notation here, edu.stanford.cs193p, and then instead of putting instructor, put your SUNet ID, because no one else has that. This would uniquely identify you in the universe. No one else is going to have that organization identifier. And then it builds a unique identifier from the app by combining these two things. Okay? You get to choose the language you want to program in here. Um, it actually doesn't matter what you choose here. This is just going to be the language that the initial template it's going to give you starts out in. You can freely mix Objective-C and Swift when you're building iOS apps, okay? Back and forth, or, the, you don't have to pick one and be stuck with it. We're going to be doing all our programming in this class in Swift, however. Then this is whether we want to build an iPhone-only calculator, an iPad-only calculator, or a universal calculator that will work on either iPad or iPhone. Okay, and we're going to go universal, even though the first two weeks we're going to be focusing on iPhone only. In the third week, we'll expand our calculator to work on an iPad as well. Um, here, we're not going to be using databases yet. That'll be about week six, and uh, we will be talking about testing later, later in the quarter, probably in a Friday section again, but we're not doing it now, so you can leave these unchecked. All right, so now I hit next, and it says, where do you want to put this project? I'm going to put it in my home directory in a folder called developer, and I highly recommend you do the same, okay? 
home directory developer, so all your apps will start piling up in here. Here's the source control thing I was talking about. We're not going to do this at the beginning, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. All right, so we hit create, and it creates our first app. Now, it's actually created these six files over here on the side, and over the course of the quarter, I'll show you what all six of these are about. Today, we're only going to focus on uh, two of them. And most, how many of you have used Xcode before for any class or anything? Okay, so about a third of you. Um, so let me explain a little bit about Xcode's UI and what it looks like. You see this area on the left, this blue area? That's called the navigator. And it's basically for navigating your project. And you can do it in different ways. This is the project navigator that we see right here. And it's basically showing you your files. You can arrange them in folders and stuff, but it's basically the files in your app. But you can navigate by searching. Okay, you can type some search text in here, search for it in your app. You can navigate all your breakpoints if you're debugging. Uh, you can go back and look at all your old builds to see any errors or warnings you have. Okay, even if you fixed it, you can go back uh, and look at them. So the navigator is kind of how you keep track of what's going on uh, in your app. On the right-hand side here, we have the utilities area, which is actually two windows. See, it's split, top and bottom here. Okay, the top part is essentially an, an inspector. It's going to let you analyze and change attributes of whatever's selected in this main window. Right now we don't have anything selected, so it's not showing anything. And this bottom is essentially like a palette. Okay, you're going to be an artist building your app, okay? And you're going to need things like buttons and web views and things like that to build your app, and you're going to be finding them all and pulling them all out of here. So it's your palette, your artist palette as you build things, okay? You can show and hide these two side panels with these buttons up here. I will tend to not do command keys, except for like copy and paste, uh, so that you can see what's going on. But there are tons of command keys in Xcode. And if you go to Xcode Preferences and look under uh, Key Bindings right here, you'll see all of them. And there's tons and tons and tons. And you can even change them, of course, if you don't like them. Uh, but it has a lot of commands. All right, so I'll try to avoid using those uh, command keys. So you can hide those with these things. So you have hidden both sides, right? Okay. And you can, so you can kind of manage your screen real estate. Now, I have a very low resolution screen here. Uh, so I have to manage my real estate uh, quite efficiently. If you have a higher resolution screen, uh, then you would uh, obviously not be doing as much hiding and showing of these things. Um, so if we look at the navigator, what's selected right now? It's the project itself. At the very top level, this blue bar is selecting the project. So we're actually seeing the project. Okay, the kind of settings of the project in the main window here, this main uh, window. And we're, here's some of them here, right? Some of these we set on that first page, like the bundle identifier, uh, and whether it was universal or iPad and iPhone, et cetera. But there's plenty more settings over here. We'll get to most of those settings as the quarter goes by. The only setting that's important for you to know now is this team setting. See where it says team none? You're going to want to be able to write your app uh, and have it run on a device. Okay? It has a simulator, which I'm going to use today, but you also want to be able to run on a device. And to do that, you need to register an Apple ID. So here I already have mine, this CNS 193P instructor, but you're going to go down here to add an account, and you're going to give an Apple ID and password. Any Apple ID will do. You don't have to join any program or anything, just any Apple ID will work here. And you put the ID and password in, and then you're going to select it here. Um, and then it's going to appear here like this. Okay. Now, when you have a team selected, now you can plug a device in. And you're going to get this warning here, no provisioning profiles found. And you just click Fix Issue right there. You have to be connected to the network at the time. All right, Fix Issue, and it'll fix that. It'll basically get the ID of your device, register it uh, for, with you as the developer, uh, and off you go. Okay? So you'll need to do that. You only really need to do that when it comes to running on a device. When we're running in the simulator, we're not going to need to do that. But you might as well get this started now. Okay? Now, what about these other files over here in the navigator that it made, these six files? Well, um, like I said, we're not going to talk about all of them. This one, for example, assets.xcassets. That's all your media assets. So that's images, sounds, icons, things like that. Um, here, for example, is the app icon, which I haven't set. So all these are all blank. 
Um, so we're not really going to uh, talk about that today, but we'll eventually talk about it. And in fact, um, not only am I not going to talk about um, this XZ Assets uh, thing right here, but I'm also not going to talk about this app delegate or the launch screen or the info.p list. Okay? So I'm going to select all those and right click on them and choose new group from selection and put them all in a folder, okay? which I'm going to call supporting files. Because that's what they are, really. They're kind of files to support my app. You see, they're still there. I just kind of got them out of the way. So we can focus on these two files, which is the most important thing uh, to our demo today. Okay? 